People love to paint, that's a fact. People draw on paper and on a computer, and before their invention, on papyrus and parchment. However, you can draw on stones or sand if you had a crayon or a stick. But how long have people been painting? At first glance, the question seems absurd, but in fact, the answer to it means a lot for the study on the early history of mankind. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. 5th century burial in Czech Republic Czech archaeologists unearthed a 1,600-year-old burial in the north of the country and found gold items inside. The opening was made back in 2019, but it was announced only now. Excavations were carried out in the village of Sendrasis. The discovered necropolis was dated to the 5th century. The remains of five people were found. The necropolis was once found by vandals and plundered. However, one tomb remained intact. It was the grave of a woman of 35-50 years old who held a high position in society. This is indicated by the luxury items that were in her grave. Gold and silver buckles inlaid with semi-precious stones, a headdress decorated with gold, a bone comb, and the remains of rich fabric. In addition, the grave contained the bones of an unknown animal, the remains of an eggshell and a ceramic vessel. At the time of burial, the vessel contained beef broth. Traces of meat were also preserved on a knife found there. Scientists are going to analyze teeth for the presence of carbon and nitrogen isotopes. This will help determine determine the diet of each buried person. Gold Artifacts in Sweden Archaeologists have discovered on the territory of the settlement in Aska, Sweden, gold plates, which depict couples embracing. The finds are about 1,300 years old. About two dozen drawings on gold foil were found during excavations of a mound, on the site of which in ancient times there was a banquet hall. Archaeologists are trying to collect engravings from the discovered fragments. So far, scientists find it difficult to say what the gold items with the image of hugging couples were intended for. Similar artifacts were previously found in banquet holes next to the remains of pillars that supported the roof. Perhaps the found engravings depict gods and goddesses. As experts explain, at that time the kings declared their divine origin. According to another hypothesis, the princess and princesses who were about to get married could be depicted in the prince. In addition to gold items, the excavations revealed whalebone figurines and iron pendants with spiral patterns. Radiocarbon dating has shown that the hole was built between 650 and 680 AD and was dismantled around 940. 6th century ivory crest during excavations in Bavaria, archaeologists unearthed valuable artifacts in two ornate 6th century burials, among which they highlight an ivory comb decorated with animal images and a red ceramic bowl made in what is now Tunisia. The crest was found in the burial of an adult man, whose age was 40-50 years. He was a warrior buried with a full array of weapons, including a long sword, spear, shield, and battle axe. In the pit next to the grave, archaeologists also found the skeletal remains of a horse and the presence of a pair of spurs and the remains of a bridle found inside the man's grave suggest that he was the owner of this horse. At the feet of the warrior was a bag made of organic material, but it is almost not preserved. A comb was found in it, as well as scissors, with the help of which a warrior could take care of his hair and beard. This ridge split over time, but restorers were able to restore it. Ridges are more common in later medieval burial contexts, but they were generally carved from horn or the bones of native animals. Ivory carvings of any kind were extremely rare in the 6th century, and the few surviving ivory ridges were simple or biblical. This ridge is quite different from those previously found. High-quality carvings depicted a scene of hunting animals that were not typical of Europe. Prey, similar to antelope, leaping from the pursuing predators. At the same time, it is explained that since there are no other similar examples, archaeologists could not determine exactly which animals are depicted on the ridge. Huji, precious snail cases. It is for this that the Chinese fashion for very long nails appeared and kept for several centuries. Even now, they say, among the new Chinese, you can find enough owners of long nails on the little finger. Thus, the owner of the nails signaled his wealth and the idle lifestyle. The fashion of the Chinese aristocracy for long nails originated in the Middle Ages, but became especially popular in the 18th-19th centuries. 
It was then that the noble Chinese began to grow especially outstanding nails up to 15 centimeters long, and previously they wore no more than a couple of centimeters, neatly trimmed and all the same lengths. Most often, super long nails were grown by women, although some men were also fond of growing them, but less often, usually stopping at medium length. And of course, having all the nails very long was completely uncomfortable, so they were left to grow two nails on each hand, on the little finger and on the ring finger. And in order, firstly to decorate oneself, and secondly to protect the treasures from breakdowns, they began to wear special jewelry cases, which were called Gigi Tao or Huji, in translation, protection of fingers, nails. Huji were a decorated hard claw with a hole for a fingertip, made of precious metals, bone or shell, and decorated with stones, animal and feathers. Antique nail covers made 200 years ago are now collectibles, and most of the surviving huji are not so valuable in terms of materials, they are most often silver with semi-precious stones. And in general, there are a lot of them, and you can buy the marigold for quite a bit of money. Scrolls of Herculaneum the famous eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD destroyed not only the ancient city of Pompeii, coastal Herculaneum was the first to be struck by the scorching heat and was literally wiped off the face of the earth. In this ancient city was the estate of Luscious Calpurnius Piso, the father-in-law of Julius Caesar. This statesman had a rich library, which experts called the Villa of the Papyrus. Unfortunately, all the ancient scrolls were completely cheered and impossible to read, but scientists have found a way. What did the mysterious scrolls of Herculaneum revealed to modern science. In the library of Lysias Calpurnia Piso, there were more than 1,800 scrolls of papyrus. They were turned into Blake and chaired lumps. Finally, they are decrypted thanks to revolutionary multispectral imaging technology. Professor Brentum Sills was able to create algorithm to interpret obscure data from computed tomography and X-ray phase contrast tomography. According to Sills, what was read on the scrolls suggests that they may have written in the principles of the teachings of Epicurus. This philosophy was widespread in Rome from the beginning of the 1st century BC. Scrolls can also contain latent texts. This hypothesis is based on the fact that the classical Roman libraries had both a Greek and a Latin section. Only a very small proportion of the Herculaneum scrolls are written in Latin. Also, scrolls can contain long-lost works, for example, poems by Sappho or a treatise by Mark Antony written by him about his own drunkenness. The spread of knowledge 400,000 years ago Scientists believe that already 400,000 years ago, knowledge and skills were already spreading between different groups of people. Until now, it was believed that culture expansion began only 70,000 years ago, when modern humans, Homo sapiens, began to disperse. In the basis of their research, scientists took data on the use of fire by hominins, obtained from archaeological excavations in different places around the world. In many places, researchers have found similar traces of the treatment of objects with fire. In their opinion, it it is unlikely that this similarity was due to the fact that the early predecessors of humans themselves traveled great distances or that they simultaneously developed certain methods separately from each other. Instruments made using the so-called level watt technique appear in a very short period of time in more and more places in the old world. There are also genetic traces that show that different populations of hominins must have been in contact with each other. The researchers considered not only the archaeological evidence of the spread of the use of the fire, but also what is needed to share such knowledge. It was important to find out how certain types of hominins could be in social contact with each other. Therefore, knowledge from anthropology, primatology and social sciences was integrated. Pterodactyl fossil turns out to be a giant ancient fish. When evaluating a fossil from a private collection, paleontologists at the University of Portsmouth found that the bone, mistaken for a part of the skull of pterodactyl, is in fact the largest fossil of an ancient deep-sea fish. David Martell, the scientist who made the assessment, quickly determined that the fossil was not one bone, but a whole array of thin bone plates. Only one animal has such a structure, and that is the xylacanth. We found the rudimentary lung of this bizarre-looking fish. The collector, who was sure he had purchased the pterodactyl, was disappointed, but the scientists were delighted. This fossil has been found in a phosphate deposits in Morocco and is the first silicanth ever found in the region. Probably no one made an accurate since the fossil was found next to the remains of pterodactyl. The delight of scientists can be understood because silicanths are amazing creatures. They first appeared 400 million years ago, 200 million years before the first dinosaurs, which were later survived by fish. 
For a long time it was believed that silicons became extinct 66 million years ago, but in 1938 a live silicons was found off the coast of South Africa. Since then, several separate members of a related species have been found in Indonesia. Martel believes that, that the animal could have reached 5 meters in length. For comparison, a great white shark is about 4.5 meters long, while modern representatives of silicons grow only up to 2 meters. This special fish was huge, this is probably the largest silicons ever discovered. Traces of pre-Columbian civilization in Guadalupe Specialists of the National Institute for Preventive Archaeological Research of France during exploration work in the city of Abim, Guadalupe, have discovered more than a hundred graves of the pre-Columbian period. The archaeologists were invited by the local authorities. It is planned to build a residential complex on the site they surveyed. However, now the implementation of this project has become questionable since for the first time archaeologists have discovered a site with an unprecedentedly high concentration of traces of the pre-Columbian civilization. Archaeologists have unearthed several cultural layers. In the earliest of them, they found a large number of human remains buried in round pits as well as pits and pottery. According to scientists, these traces were left by the culture that lived here from the 11th to the 13th century AD. It is believed that the excavated buildings had an agricultural purpose. Sugarcane was probably cultivated in this area and sugar was produced. This is indicated by a large number of found vessels with the remains of molasses and molds for making sugar candies. A letter on a clay tablet Scientists have found an unbaked clay tablet about 7,000 years old. It is covered with lines, according to archaeologists, which are the so-called prototype. This term was introduced into scientific circulation in the 1960s after the discovery in Romania of three similar tablets with mysterious signs. Experts decided that engravings on tablets could have served as a means of transmitting information in ancient times. It is not possible to decipher them, since they were created by people who did not know the alphabet. Scientists hope that artificial intelligence will help translate these messages in the future. Over the past 60 years, similar tablets have often been found on both sides of the Balkan mountains. There is even a classification of such artifacts, the oldest of which is 8,000 years old. Most of the tablets are of the same elliptical shape, some of them have images of animals, but in most cases they are covered with simple lines and patterns. The grave of a giant was found in Egypt. A very interesting archaeological find was made in Egyptian Alexandria. Scientists have discovered there a huge black sarcophagus with the remains of a humanoid, which during life could boast a height of more than 2.5 meters. So here we are, dealing with a find that could potentially indicate the existence of giant humanoids known in the Bible as a Nephilim. According to archaeologists, this almost 3 meter sarcophagus dates from no later than the 3rd century BC, that is the so-called Era of Ptolemy, which began after the death of Alexander the Great. The sarcophagus was found under a layer of earth of almost 5 meters and most likely had lain there for several thousand years. The Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities has already recognized the find as the largest sarcophagus ever discovered in Alexandria. In addition to the sarcophagus, there was also a huge bust of alabaster, which probably depicts a deceased giant. This is not the only known case in history with the discovery of the tomb of giants in Alexandria. According to records, this is a king of the second dynasty of Egypt who lived almost 3000 BC. It is true that his remains were never found, but according to records, found by Flinders Patry, Ches Chimui, measured about 5 cubits and 3 arms, which means he was 2.4 to 2.6 meters high. The age of the oldest drawings on the planet so the earliest drawings on the territory of Europe appeared about 65,000 years ago. Scientists have found them in three caves in Spain, in La Pasiega, Maltravisa and Airedales. The caves, by the way, are located in different parts of Spain, in the northeast, in the south and in the west. And according to experts, people lived in them for 100,000 years. The drawings include both geometric and anthropomorphic figures as well as images of animals as well as handprints. Well, okay, you say, suppose these are 
are indeed drawings of Neanderthals, but how do we know what their age is? Good question. There is a dating method with the uranium series, or the uranium-thorium method. It consists in isotopic analysis of calcite incrustations formed on the walls of caves. If such a leak was formed after the drawing, then its dating gives the latest time of the drawing's creation. For the study, 53 samples were taken from different places in the drawings of all three caves. The results of the analysis were as follows. La Pasiega, 64.8 thousand years. Maltraviso, 66.7 thousand years. Airedales, 65 and a half thousand years old. It turns out that either Cro-Manians appeared in Europe for more than 20 thousand years more than previously thought, or more likely, Neanderthals were not so insensitive and narrow-minded creatures. They possessed a certain penchant for the visual arts, a share of creativity, and the ability to think symbolically. Mysterious message from 3,700 years ago. One day in July 1908, the Italian archaeologist Luigi Pernier was excavating the ruins of a palace at Fista near Ayatriata in southern Crete. He was almost finished his day when one of the workers told him, full of emotion, that he had discovered something incredible and mysterious. When the Italian saw what was at stake, he was speechless. It was the record of a thousand years ago on a disc now known as the Disc of Fistas. The purpose of its use and the place where it was made have not yet been determined, which made this object one of the most famous mysteries of archaeology. The disc is currently in the Heraklion Museum in Crete, Greece. One of the things that makes Vista's disc a unique piece is that the symbols on the disc are not drawings but prints made with some kind of stamp. This suggests that the disc is one of the first printed documents in history. Throughout the 20th century, numerous attempts were made to decipher the contents of the disc, on which 61 words can be seen, 30 on one side and 31 on the other, in a spiral seal sequence, the meaning of which is unknown. Since then, several experts and amateurs have translated the signs claiming to be a prayer, a treaty, a religious calendar, and even records of the Minoan fleet in the Aegean. The Disc of Feastus is a challenge to reason, an unresolved code that will give anyone who can decipher it an incomparable knowledge of one of the most mythical periods in Greek history. The Minoan period, or maybe not the Minoan period, such as the riddle that the disc poses before us. Together with the Rosetta Stone and Antikythera mechanism, the Feasta disc is a part of the pantheon of the great mysteries of antiquity. In 1983, the senior researcher, specialist in runes, Soviet linguist Grinevich, managed to decipher the inscription on the disc. However, the scientific world did not agree with him and criticized his deciphering. Therefore, they tried to hide the conclusions of the scientists, and now you will understand why. His verdict was that the inscription was made by the Slavic civilization. Traditional science considers the Etruscans to be the teachers of the Romans, and who were the mentors of the Etruscans is not known. But after reading the transcript, it became clear who their teachers were. The Slovenian tribe, more precisely the Trupelians, who in the second millennium BC left the Dnieper region and settled on a foreign land. The inscription, let's call it that, although the letters were stamped, was made using Slavic runes, and to read it, you need to take as a basis not Greek, but Proto-Slavic. The deciphered text says that the Trotters people were forced to leave their land and yearn for it very much. Now ask yourself a question. Can modern Europe accept the fact that the Slavs stood at its origins? The answer is obvious. And to know more about the mysteries of the past, I recommend that you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell so as not to miss a new video. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!